South Africa, welcome to Afternoon Express. Hope you had a lovely weekend. How are you? I'm amazing. My name is Bani Satemba. I'm here with uh, Upani Mbuli. <laughs> I might be dressed in blue, but there is no Monday blues in the lot this afternoon because we are about to bring straight heat, but tackling a you very... You were just celebrating Cardi as well. You were getting yeah. down just now. <laughs> I was, I was. <laughs> Homegirl won a Grammy, so we're having such fun in the lot. But also bring a very important topic yeah, to, yeah, to the a forefront. A very important one. Even though being diagnosed with HIV is no longer a death sentence, it's still something that's feared by most people. And sadly, people who are living with HIV still experience prejudice and discrimination in communities. So today on the show, we meet an exceptional athlete and activist, Evelina Shabalala, who brought about a paradigm shift in the manner HIV was previously perceived in her world and in South Africa. Absolutely. Now we also chat to Henny Jacobs, who plays the role of Deirdre Kreling in Seven Delan, about his career journey. And then we have Hanley Rothels, who is the head writer on Seven Delan, who discusses the importance of Deirdre's current storyline in the soapy. And everyone, favorite duck, Dr. Cindy Fanzel is in the loft to give us some expert advice on HIV. Absolutely, can't wait for that conversation. Plus, we spread some goodness with actress Zenande Mfenyana, who helped distribute new school shoes to the learners of Zandisile Primary School. And later on, we discuss healthy eating for a healthy pregnancy with dietitian Kim Rakas in light of Pregnancy Week, with, which commences today. Absolutely. Now, remember, you can connect with us on our social media platforms by telling us how do you support loved ones and other people affected by HIV AIDS. Simply tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Afternoon Express or comment on our Facebook page. Now, our first guest today, Henny Jacobs, plays one of the most popular characters on our screens, the character of Diederik in seven, SABC 2's Soapy Seven Delan, with a career spanning over 13 years. Mm -hmm. Henny's successful career is proof that every step in your journey, no matter how small it may seem, is vital in your achieving your biggest dreams. It doesn't end there. Henny is also a successful musician. Let's have a look at one of his popular music videos. Wow, it looks like quite a fun music video. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, it was a lot of fun making it. What's the song about? Um, it's a, it's a, just a love song. Yeah. Uh, about um, how when you fall in love with someone, they literally make your body want to go to jelly. <laughs> More or less. <laughs> so, uh, from 2001 to 2003. And uh, I, I was under the impression when you finished, you just you get work. Uh, yeah. It doesn't work like that. Um, so I had to do a lot of interesting jobs. Um, What's statue. the most interesting one you feel like you've done? Um, all of them were, were quite interesting, and um, you learn something from all the work that you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did a lot of uh, children's theatre, I did puppet theatre, educational theatre, uh, the occasional series here and there. Um, but everything that I've done uh, so far, I, I've learned something that I could take with yeah. me. Yeah. What's it like playing a character for 13 years? It's wonderful. Um, because you can leave him there, you know, because it's, it's his wardrobe. So as, if, when I take it <laughs> off, his I, I leave him there. But um, through the years, um, I've uh, adored playing Diederik. Um, yeah. He's quite a diverse character that has had a lot of interesting And a lot story of things life. have happened to him. Yeah, a lot yeah. of interesting yeah. things uh, that challenges uh, you, you as an actor, mm. which is mm. fantastic. Mm. So your latest storyline, is, uh, which is in development, and, and the viewers are getting to know more about it as it unravels, is quite an interesting one. Yeah. Uh, we've got a little clip to show our viewers. Iemand hoeft to weet wat you eindelijk markeer nie. Dankzij het ik niet meer kiezen nie. Om een groener is kanker. Meer dat jij omgeen. Ja, dit is waar die waarheid uitkom. Was getrouwd met een man met HIV. Wat een skande. Het is die waar nie. Ik zal met volle met die leen. Ek vech die groot kaan. Jy is die liefdevolle eigenheid. Wow. Now, I know Seven Delan doesn't shy away from big storylines and controversial storylines. Yeah. Um, what did you think when you first were introduced to sto this storyline? Well, as an actor, it's always, it's always fantastic getting a challenge like this, you yeah. know, to play it, to actually go out and do research about the story that you 
want to portray. And I mean, we're telling real stories because yeah. real people are watching us. Um, so it's a huge responsibility, but uh, also you do it and you, you stay humble because you know the people watching are the yeah. ones that, that you're actually portraying yeah. on screen. Yeah, and you're, and you're mirroring their experiences yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're also a father. You're a father yes. of two daughters. Yes. And I know that when you started to, to play the storyline, you were concerned about how this could affect your daughters or conversations that people have when people, oh, there they are, so cute. Um, <laughs> because people sometimes blur the line between real life and, and acting. Yeah, I was a bit concerned uh, just because they it also in school. And um, yeah. I was afraid uh, maybe that they um, might get bullied over it. Because like you said, some people watch the show, but they believe that that, that character that they see is yeah. the real person which is not the case. But then uh, as, as the storyline developed, I realized that we are telling a story and um, the bottom line that we're trying to get across is, is very important. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. How do your daughters feel about your work? Do they watch the show? Yeah, they, uh, no, now and then I'll show them no, because no. sometimes we have this age heavy restriction content. Yes. of, of yeah. 13 and um, they're not old enough yet. Um, now and then, uh, like with the, we did a storyline about an airplane crash. So we watched mm. some of the episodes there where I w was bitten by a snake, which they found hilarious. Upset. <laughs> uh, uh, not upsetting, yeah, it's hilarious. Because I, I told them it wasn't a real snake ah, and, and stuff yeah. like that. But they, they do know that I um, you know, go into work they every day and, an and I'm an actor and they understand that because they're both into it as well. Yeah. yeah. So what, do you, what are your hopes for viewers experiencing the storyline with you? I think uh, the bottom line that we wanted to get across is um, that HIV is not something that happens only to certain people. It can happen to anybody. To anyone, yeah. And uh, it is important to know your status. Um, and what we, you'll speak to Hanley and, and them yeah. as well. Hanley and the team did an incredible job <clears throat> writing this story. Um, factually, it was uh, impeccable. Um, and the story that we wanted to get across is, you know what, guys, get your status, know what's going on, and um, follow the right procedures. Yeah. You know? What have been the most surprising reactions to it so far? I have not received that many reactions. Yeah. Um, but because uh, I think people were, were sort of shocked in the beginning when they found out. Uh, but that's once again what we wanted to get across. You know, HIV and AIDS is something that can happen to. Doesn't matter your race or your uh, um, cultural Economic status, status or, yeah. or anything. It's it's something that can happen to anybody. Yeah. And. Um, yeah, we, that's what we wanted to get across. Yeah. Well, later on, we're going to chat to Dr. Van Sale and also the head writer and unpack the story more. Mm -hmm. Bali. Absolutely incredible work. Watching actors in their elements is so riveting. And tackling such an important topic right now, absolutely revolutionary. I love Seven Dolan for that. Now, according to statistics, South Africa has the biggest HIV epidemic in the world, with 7.1 million people living with HIV. However, we have made huge improvements in getting people to test for HIV in the recent years, with 86% of people aware of their status. So after the break, we discuss the importance of uh, the current storyline in Seven Dolan with the head writer, Hanley Ruffles, um, alongside Henny Jacobs and our Dr. Cindy Fanzel, who will be giving us expert advice on HIV. Clover Crush, 100% pure fruit juice packed with vitamins and no added sugar. Crush, your daily dose of goodness. Now also available in Long Life. With love by Clover.
indulge with Bliss Double Cream Yogurt, made with love by Clover. Welcome back from the ad break to Afternoon Express and thank you for joining us on this Monday. Now Clover Bliss is so luxuriously clean, creamy, not only it can it be enjoyed on its own, but it's also so versatile to use in your cooking and your baking. And since it is the month of love and Valentine's Day is just around the corner and a few days away, we thought that we'd give you some sweet inspiration with our blissful coconut bars. Clem, let's spread some love. Mm -hmm. Where do we begin? Ex excuse the cheesiness, but I am a romantic. Do you have a Valentine? I don't have a Valentine, so South Africa, send out like your be, CVs. If you would like to be part of Lester's Valentine, the number's 082. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Did your heart skip a beat Oh, there? my goodness, I nearly died. I'll give it to you guys later on, on social media. But you're media. making up for it in the kitchen here, so it's all good. <laughs> okay, very simple. We're gonna make these beautiful little yogurt, like, I mean, they look amazing. They, they do. It's kind of inspired by coconut ice, you know this? Yes. With the pink and the white layer. Yes. We've turned it into like a yogurt bar. They look really great, perfect for Valentine's, mm. but also for like any time. For any time. And I know you and Megan, yeah. fiance vibes, mm -hmm. what are you guys getting up to? Will you be making this in the kitchen? I can't be saying what I'm gonna make, it's a surprise. Oh, it is a surprise. You know? Absolutely, oh, so like yeah. That. yeah. Okay. okay, very simple though. Into this, in our bowl, it's gonna go some desiccated coconut. Okay. If you really like the flavor of coconut, you can toast the coconut first. Mm. Bring out that like, like nutty flavor out of it. I like that. Then we're gonna add some corn flour and this is also gonna help set these bars because we are gonna bake it. Okay. Cool. And so you want the, the you want the foundation and the structure to remain in a, in a heart. And yes. And just be like a clump. Talking about the foundation of these bars, so I'm making one of the um, layers. There's two layers to this. Okay. The only difference is the white layer's got a vanilla essence in there. The pink layer's got a little bit of food coloring in there and that's it. Oh, nice. So it's the same flavor, just two different layers. Okay. The bottom part of it is a delicious crust made out of Oat, oatmeal <laughs> out of oats and flour and sugar. Okay. So it's nice and nutty, you kind of break through that texture as well. Nice. It's really delicious. I like I like playing with textures in the kitchen too, especially yeah. with desserts. Mm, absolutely. Okay, that's nice. So then we've got some golden syrup, but this is maple flavored. Mm. You can use straight up maple syrup. It is very expensive. You know what? Actually, no, it's Valentine's Day. It's Spend worth the it. extra money. Spend it. Get okay. get the maple syrup. This is gonna go in there now. Okay. It's gonna be a nice sweetness we get from this, and it's also gonna upset the, these bars. Nice. Then a little bit of the food coloring going in. Okay. A little bit goes a long way, okay? I actually was going to ask, because you don't want it to come out too red, yeah. if you want it more pink. So I'll say about three drops. Let's see how it goes. Okay. Now we're going to take our Clover Bliss, it's a double cream one, and it's strawberries and cream. Delicious. That's going in. Delicious. Does it matter what you put in first, the wet ingredients, compared to the dry? No, 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 it's absolutely fine. Are you okay. going to give that a mix for me? I will, whilst I'm mixing it up. If you're joining us at home and you want to get in on these delicious coconut bars, SMS the keyword Clover to 33650, and you could be trying this this Valentine's Day. 14th of February is um, on a Thursday, right? It is. It's not typically a date day, but I mean, we can turn it into one. Who's you can have a date in the kitchen. And any day is a date day. Oh, any day is a date day. Absolutely. I love that. Okay, All right, cool. stunning. So what I've done is I've made my first, the, the first oat layer at the bottom, mm. and then I added the vanilla layer, which again is just this minus the food coloring. Okay. And then I froze it slightly so I can separate the two layers. We're going to pour this over the white layer now. Okay. And again, we want the bottom layer to be slightly frozen so when we add the two, they don't mix. Oh, nice. So Perfect. you have the distinct mm. in color. So what you do is once you add that, you give it about 15 minutes just to let the bottom part like thaw out. Okay. Goes into the oven, 45 minutes later, Look how we've perfect the look. We just use cookie cutouts. Yes. The hot shape ones, and that's how they came out. They look Yes, mm. cheesy, but is Valentine's Day not all about the cheese? It is all about the cheese. It's all about the romance. And more than anything, I think it's about appreciating those that you love. Absolutely. So whether it's your mom, your dad, maybe I don't even need a Valentine. So maybe you guys can keep your CVs for now. <laughs> See these no how? Yes, the applications are coming in. Now that's a sweet idea to sweep the loved ones right off their feet. SMS the keyword Clover to 33650 to get this recipe. And if you need a reminder, here's a recap.
Made with love by Clover. Now, often the storylines we watch on our screens reflect on the issues that our societies are dealing with. And the issue of HIV is one that we can never stop talking about due to the negative stigma that still exists around people who are diagnosed with it. d Direct storyline on Seven Dalan takes a look at the stereotypes surrounding people living with HIV. Absolutely. Now, we also have Han Lee, who is the head writer at Seven Dalan, to unpack the storyline, as well as Dr. Cindy Fanzel to discuss some facts and myths about HIV. Dit is wat jy vir jou vriende doet. Gaan het nou met om. Paai beter. Het me alles vertel. Oh, dankie toch. Ek, ek kan nie vir jou sê hoe moeilik dit was nie. Ek het om soveel keer gedruk om vir jou te sê. Jy verdien om te weet. En die druk het jou nou nodig. Ek weet. Ek het baie gaan nalees. Daar is soveel goed wat hulle deestal kan doen om jou leven te verleng. Precies. En ek is daar om julle te ondersteun. Ons gaan hierdie pad saamdoop. <laughs> Soos ek desuit vir jou gesê het, om HIV positief te wees, is lang al nie meer doodsvolle sê. Wow, what a moment. So that was sure. the moment when South Africa found out. Wow. Yes. <laughs> I mean, watching that scene, obviously there was that twist that she thought that they were speaking about a different illness, but unfortunately her husband's status was revealed to her in quite a shocking way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doctor, how, how do people, first of all, tackle telling the family? Well, disclosure is, is, is a hard thing. I think we still, we still have people that struggle with it. And I always say that the people that need to know your status are people that you're exchanging bodily fluids with. So I'm not one for telling the whole family. I'm, I'm one for telling your partner. And, and even so, it must be, it must be very strategic because you, know, yeah. you need to know what your partner feels about HIV in the first place. Yeah. And then you, you, know, you work around that. Hanley, you're the head writer at Seven Delan, and, and I mentioned earlier to Diederik that Seven Delan does not shy away from talking about the hard, mm -hmm. real stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's always so exciting to see people's reactions to your storylines. Mm -hmm. so, and uh, Dr. Fonse, you've been uh, consulting on the storyline. Mm -hmm. What's it been like working together and just fleshing the storyline out? It's been tremendous. I mean, it was actually incredible how it came about. We have a bi and a biannual sick a week of story conference for the next six months and we decided obviously we look at our country we look at what we want to say we look at not only entertaining but informing and educating mm. because that is what what is our response it's also our responsibility so we decided we're going to do a, an HIV story and we're going to be doing it with a long-term character who is, who is very well loved by our audience mm. and we're going to make it a, a, a story of, of hope and success and mm. um, because it is not a death sentence yeah. like we saw in the clip and then I was driving home a couple of days later and I heard Cindy um, on the radio and she was I, I, I get goosebumps when I think about it now how things just pan out and and I, I stopped in my garage at home and I couldn't put off the radio because she was just the way she was speaking about this and I thought I we needed a, uh, my script department and myself needed a handle on it and mm -hmm. suddenly this handle was just provided to me uh, and and we contacted through the airwaves her. miraculously <laughs> exactly yeah um, and then she contacted us back um, amazingly and then we she started walking this journey with us and she came to our boardroom and that first session, Cindy, I will never forget, my entire team, our entire team, left there in an absolute state of awe in terms wow. of just the information that she could, could, could mm. convey. I mean, we all know people and friends mm. who are HIV, who do uh, live with HIV, yeah. but just the way she could convey to us and even teach us even more, that was yeah. incredible. Yeah. You know, what stands out for me is you said you, you chose a character that's a long-term character yeah. and that's well-loved yeah. by um, Stephen Delan audiences. Do you, do you think that makes the story way more impactful? Yes, I do think so. Yeah. Because it's not, it's many people in this country, millions, um, walk this journey for a lifetime yeah. and not just for a yeah. short time. And it would have, it's easy to do a storyline of two weeks or three months on an important issue. Yeah. But when you then just shy away, it's like our kiss recently that made such upheaval. Oh, you know, yeah. we're going to stick yeah. with that. <laughs> you know, we're going we're gonna to walk that road. Absolutely. So it's, it's important to not shy away from cru crucial mm. issues. Yeah. So that's what we try to do while we entertain. Mm. Yeah, Cindy, awesome. what was so important that you just had to relay, not only to the character Diedrich, but to the, to the team? What were the facts and myths that people need to get through and overcome? The most important thing was, to, was of course, to, to relay the fact that HIV is not a death sentence and that it can happen to anyone. And that's why I'm so glad that they chose, you know, a, a, a character that's not gay. 
because if you, mm. if, you know if you look at the at most of the the white characters that are portrayed living with HIV, it's mostly white gay males. Mm. So to have a white heterosexual male living with HIV is very different, and it's important to know that there are white heterosexual males living with HIV. And the second thing, of course, was you know the whole thing that can happen to anyone. So it doesn't matter what socioeconomic status or what background you're from, HIV can and does happen to anyone. And the last thing was just the one of hope. You know, so somewhere along the line, hopefully there'll be a baby to show that even though you're living mm -hmm. with HIV, mm -hmm. you can you know you can have sex and, and and not transmit the virus to your partner and have kids and so on and so on. So so that's, that's really important because it's about hope. I think a lot of people, when they find out their statuses, are concerned about the future. Am I going to be able to have kids? Will I be able to have meaningful relationships? And the answer is yes. Yeah. You know, a resounding yes to all of those questions. Yeah. Mm. Andy, why is it so important for Sia van der Lant to be at the center of these, these hard social issues that we as South Africans need to tackle? Because, I mean, you have an incredible audience who could just shy away from it and play it safe. Mm. I don't think you can shy away anymore. Um, our audience is we in an, in such a unique position. Mm -hmm. uh, we are we have such a diverse audience. We, people don't know how diverse our audience is. It's um, you know 40 42 percent black audience, yeah. and people used to think oh it was a white show, more mm -hmm. coloured show. But we are so well spread, and we are unique in that sense to show people um, from different different places in our society and our world that might still be isolated from mm. each other. Our responsibility and especially um, our producer and uh, Tandi Ramatisele, it's a, it's a huge responsibility yeah. for us yeah. to do that. Um, because yeah, we can still tell lovely funny stories and, and love stories but you have to kind of hit to the bone otherwise yeah. you don't touch the heart of people yeah. and I believe it's important. Yeah mm. and Henny being an actor you always want to touch the heart of people. Yes. Mm. But You've already mentioned the fear that, unfortunately, your daughters might get a stigma at school. Are there any other negatives or things that you were very fearful of taking on this um, storyline? Uh, no, no. When I, when I sat down and thought about it, uh, like I said earlier, the main thing was to get this, uh, this message across mm -hmm. about uh, what we're trying to, to tell you and that it's important to know the facts. Because I think there's a lot of people out there that's, that's scared. You know, yeah. and if we can make a difference in one person's life, then then that's important. Yeah, yeah. doctor, where are we in our as South Africans in our fight against HIV and AIDS? Okay, so at the moment we're chasing a target that was, um, you know, set by the United Nations AIDS um, um, organization. We we need to have 90% of people knowing their statuses, and of those 90%. We want 90% of them on treatment, and of those 90% on treatment, we want 90% of them with a, a, a suppressed viral load. And the idea is to, is to make sure that we reduce infections. So if you're taking your treatment properly and, and your viral load is undetectable, it's suppressed, you can't transmit the virus. So that's really where we are. I think every country is working towards 90, 90, 90. Mm. And that's why it's important for everybody to go and get tested. If, you don't, if we don't test, we can't help you. But if you do test, then we know exactly what to do. Whoa, that's uh, a lot of to take in all at once, but I think it is so crucial to have this conversation right now, mm -hmm. especially in the beginning of the year, leading up to Valentine's Day mm -hmm. also. But another stigma that people think is that it's only through intimacy that one can contract it. But we can see even in Henny's character that there is a possibility of drug use, needles, um, sanit things being hygienic, and that spread happening. Yeah, mm -hmm. so... so I, mean, I think that's one of the important things that I didn't want to come through in the storyline. I didn't want it to only focus on, on you know, sexual transmission. So the commonest way of contracting HIV is obviously through sex. But you can also get it through intravenous um, drug use. So in Henny's case, I think it's very, we don't really know how he got it. And, I, and I, that is important to me. And, okay. and I, I remember sharing this with the team that we don't want to focus it on one aspect of, of HIV um, you know, transmission. Yeah. Thank you so much Thank for coming you. through and spreading such light on such a heavy topic. So after the break, we spread some goodness with actress Uzinande Mfunyane, who recently visited the school, Usinzile uh, Primary School, to give some school shoes away to some very deserving kids. Plus, we chat to Kim about the healthy eating habits of healthy pregnancies. See you after the break. Clover Crush, 100% pure fruit juice packed with vitamins and no added sugar. Crush, your daily dose of goodness. Now also available in Long Life. With love by Clover.
Clover Crush. 100% pure fruit juice packed with vitamins and no added sugar. Crush, your daily dose of goodness. Now also available in long life. With love by Clover. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, Clover Crush is proud of its promise to spread goodness above and beyond its great tasting juice. As courtesy of Clover Crush, 20,000 students in communities across South Africa will be receiving a brand new pair of Smart Step school shoes at various schools. Now, to help spread the goodness, they've created a Crush Goodness crew, and Soapy star Uzenande Mfunyane got to on board to help distribute brand new pair of school shoes to deserving learners. At Sandisile Primary, the ever socially minded actress Zanande was here to give away a pair of smart step school shoes to every child, courtesy of the Clover hashtag Crush Goodness campaign. The reason I wanted to be part of the Clover Crush Goodness campaign was simply because I love giving back. I'm a philanthropist at heart, so it just made sense for me to be part of this campaign and just to see the joy that you bring in other people's lives. I feel rewarded to give, so that's why I definitely wanted to be part of this. When the students found, found out that they're going to receive shoes, they were so very much excited because there are those whose parents have just bought them Christmas shoes with forgetting that January is coming so that they need to be having new shoes so that they don't have problems as the year starts. They are very much excited to see Zenande because they've been seeing Zenande on television. So now they've seen Zenande on real life, they've been able to interact with her. So I think that is going to have a lasting memory in their lives. A simple pair of shoes can also assist because there are learners who are from uh, families that are not well to do. So that is actually going a long way to ensure that all the learners are actually treated the same. The appreciation of the children, their teachers and parents at this simple but essential gift showed how much one can take school shoes for granted. The reason I think it's important for the kids to receive brand new school shoes is because a lot of the times uh, these kids come from underprivileged homes where you're going to get like one pair of shoes and then you must wear that pair of shoes for the next three years. And also it gives them confidence, you know, when they're walking in the street and, you know, is, is really, it's really beautiful to, to see the, the gratitude on their faces because they really appreciate it. Getting new school shoes means a lot because now I, other children will not laugh at me at school. My new pair of school shoes means a lot to me and now I can carry on with my future. I'm getting a new pair of shoes from Clover. It feels great. It means that I am wanted and I am special like the other kids and we are also special as the same. So many kids are just so, they don't expect much, you know, they don't, they don't sit there waiting for anything to even, anything good to even happen to them or for them. So us spreading this goodness to them is just, it's, it cheers them up. I spread goodness at home with, with helping my mom about, with chores like the dishes, mopping, sweeping. I spread goodness at home by helping my mother clean the house and cook. I share goodness at home by helping my mom cleaning, washing the dishes, um, mopping, sweeping. Being sure to share the goodness beyond the primary school and into the community, next, Crush brought smiles to the Moses Sihlangu Healthcare Center. For Clover Crush coming into our organization or in our community, it means a lot because we see them selling the products and you don't see them what they're doing for the community. Giving us the shoes, it means a lot for us. We really appreciate a lot and the kids are really going to enjoy it. The reason why this campaign is so close to my heart is because I love giving back. I love, I really am a philanthropist at heart. So for me, this, this campaign just makes sense to me in my life and giving back to someone who's, who's not able to do anything for you back. That for me is the spirit of true giving. Speaking of spreading goodness, February the 8th marked the beginning of Pregnancy Awareness Week, um, which aims to assist moms with access to antenatal care information. In light of Pregnancy Week, the Department of Health has also created an initiative 
for expectant mothers called Mom Connect. Mom Connect is a free cell phone based resource for accessing pregnancy related health information. Dietitian Kim Rutgers is here to tell us all about it, as well as things we need to know about having a healthy pregnancy. Welcome to the loft. Hello, thank you to be here. So, what is the aim of Pregnancy Awareness Week, apart from the obvious? Because I think people often think there's pregnancy information everywhere. You can just walk into a shop and buy a book or, or, or research it on the internet, but there's still large parts of our communities who don't have access to, yeah. to information. For sure, so there's a lot of rural um, places still in our country, and we need to get to those people just to make sure that they get the right advice and they access the information correctly, like Mom Connect, as you said, yeah. um, because they do need this information. If we can target those areas, we can target malnutrition in our country, yeah. and so it starts the first thousand days of life, which is from conception to the second, uh, to, to the child's second birthday. Yeah, I mean, it's a very important time because that development can actually hamper a child's life forever if, yeah. it, if it doesn't happen um, adequately, right? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so, so please carry on. So especially with nutrients, for example, um, just to get the proper ones um, would mean if they're going to be born like in, in, in an optimal um, way or not, mm, you know? Yeah. So Mom Connect is a mobile-based um, initiative. How do people access it? How Do people have to have data? So it's a free um, thing that, that started by the Department of Health. And what is so nice about it is that you can go to the clinic, um, a nurse would be there to help you, they would dial in the number, and then you get registered. And then from that point, you will get information each month or each semester about what's happening or trimester. Right. Yeah. So uh, what's the scope of the information that is shared on Mom Connect? Is it is it everything from nutrition yeah. to wellness, what yeah. to eat, what not to eat? And what are some of the things that pregnant women should be looking out for? So I think the number one thing is obviously um, diet and what you should eat. But something that we actually forget about is hygiene. Um, mm. That's so important because you can eat something and then have dirty hands or a dirty environment. So taking in that food that you're supposed to be eating with an unhealthy environment is not going to be good for you or the baby. Yeah. And so those are the type of information that Mom Connect actually gives everyone. And what should women be staying away from during those, those early days of pregnancy? What can't you eat? What can't yeah. you do? What is a no-no? Well, I think the very big no-no would be smoking, mm -hmm. if I'm honest, before food even, um, and then alcohol. But, you know, last year we had an outbreak with list listeria as well. Um, yes. And those are things from, like, your processed foods. So things like bologna and um, other kind of processed foods, stay away. If food is not whole or in its natural form, then let it go. Yeah. You know, eat your fruit, eat your veggies. Those are whole natural foods that you can wash and then just eat on yeah. the go. And would you say that South Africa is, is winning in its objective to educate uh, women about the importance of antenatal care? So, um, you know, each country has a set of goals that they need to reach, and we right. have like the 17 goals. Right. Um, slowly but surely, we are getting to those goals. Um, it still takes a lot of time and a lot of resources. Um, and we need to all come into this. So it's not just the public sector or government that needs to deal with this. It's the public sector as well. And, you know, sometimes you get the public and the private trying to um, butt heads a little bit. Yeah. But we need to work together, and that's the only way that we can make it work. And I think the focus needs to always be community, community, community. And if we can start thinking like that, then we can make a difference. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, there's a small part of our country that can afford medical aid, for example. Yes. And so what happens to the other people that can't afford medical aid, mm. you know? And these are the kids that are being born that are our generations in a few years' time. Yeah, and they kind of get born and, and they're on the back foot already. Yeah. And even so, people living in communities where they see pregnant women all the time, how can they get involved? So if you're watching today's show yeah. and you know that the, of someone that is pregnant, tell them about, um, about the, the, mom connect. the mom connect that we were speaking yeah. about. I mean, if we can just spread that simple message, then at least that mother will get that information. Yeah. Um, even if there is a, a child, that, it's, it's a newborn child, um, speak to the grandparents, you know, they can also go on mom connect. Mm. Mom connect doesn't only mean mom. You know, yes. it's, it's a family thing. It's a community thing again. And so they can get this information and they can even help the newborn or the infant, you know, getting to the to, the, to a healthy stage. Yeah. And to support families because yeah, it yeah. does take a village to raise a child. Definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Mom Connect is so incredible. I think it's such a good idea. How many sleepless nights would you avoid, would you have avoided had you had the app? Uh, six years. <laughs> <laughs> That's classic. <laughs> I can't believe it. Well, I absolutely have to nominate this to all pregnant women out there. It sounds so incredible. So after the break, we meet phenomenal athletes and activist Evelyn Shabalala, who defined all odds to becoming a professional runner and mountaineer, despite her social and HIV status. So remember also to connect with us on our social media platforms by telling us how do you support your loved ones or other people affected by HIV AIDS. Tweet us using the hashtag hashtag Afternoon Express or comment on our Facebook page. See you after the break. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, running a marathon and climbing the highest mountains in the world is an intimidating proposition for most people. Evelina Shavalala does both and more whilst living with HIV. She has climbed three of the seven summits, the highest mountain peaks on each continent, and takes part in the insane runs such as the Comrades Marathon regularly. So this on top of working a nine to five and participating actively in her community while keeping children off the streets by encouraging them to exercise and taking part in meetings and support groups for people who are HIV positive within her community. Makes her one of the bravest women in South Africa. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, lovely to have you join us. Yes. So I calculated it before we, 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 while we were on the break, and you've been running for 33 years. Yes, I started at uh, 86. Wow. Yeah. So what made you fall in love with running? Uh, I think you see in my family, Shabalala's family, uh, which is we have a sport, like, okay, always, uh, I'm born in, in Freestad, have okay. a smith yeah. in a farm. And then we run from school about 20 kilometers. 
Now always you are running, but I never come late 20 to Twenty k's a day. Yes, yes. In the morning and in the afternoon. Definitely. Forty k's a day. Yeah, I was very far, but I never came late. And you see, I like to eat. I was cook uh, uh, in Kobe, a milli meal, and put it in my bag to eat after break, and then to come back. Wow, that's not an easy childhood, <laughs> hey? Yeah, and then after that, okay, I must watch Solar Pass. Solar Pass is my hero. Is your hero, yeah. And Bruce Fordyce and Matthew Stimande. Yeah. They put me where I am today. That's amazing. So yes. tell me about the first race you won. Oh, the first race I won. I came in Cape Town in 80, okay, 85, but 86. But first, I, I came with my friend, just was like my mom, my own granny's mom. And he said to me, okay, you want to bring me in Cape Town? Because I was working in Devon. Okay. I'm from KZN. Right. Nice. Uh, and I know Bakerville. And then we came in December. First I go to ask my dad a permission to come here in Cape Town. But my dad was very difficult to me to come. I said, oh, how you know people there? I said, dad, please let me go. If I'm not, I'm not coping, I'm going to come back. I'm yeah. going to get there. Everything new, friends, family, everything new. Yes. And he lets me to come to Cape Town. And then I came to Cape Town. First I go to Takastat. He called him Takastat. I think it's Eastern Cape <laughs> but it's Takastat. <laughs> and then we go there with my sister, my mom's special mom. Yeah. And then we, 2006, we come down to Cape Town. And then after that, I was, we go to Hard Bay. And then, and then we stay there. I met the guy's name was, um, but now he's in PE. Yeah. He's a runner. I was running for Celtic Series in Claremont. And then I met him in Howard Bay. Most always I see him is running and also just said, okay, I'm, I must I'm run. I'm going to join yeah. you. But always at that time I was in Pinetown. I was working in Pinetown in Pal Bluff. Yeah. Every Sunday I was visiting my special mom in Pinetown. Yeah. I was running from Bluff one road till Pinetown. Mm, and then wow. after, after that, <laughs> I also go back. And then after that, okay, I was speak to Willie, you no know, William Tolo. Yeah. Yeah, but now after that, okay, I came in Cape Town. Was, okay. Yeah. Once I came in Cape Town, and then I met this guy in Howard Bay. And then he helped you start yeah, your running Yeah, he was working by Total Sport here in town. Yeah. Now me, I run with him in the morning, one route, and then I get there, and then now I must know where to come back, go back, and I go back. And then after That's he told amazing. me I want, to, I want to run the race, he said, yes. Yeah. I said, okay, Saturday is a race in Sea Point. 10 kilometers, you can. And that's the first race that yes, you won, yes, right? Yes, and then yes. you won some money and you bought yourself <sighs> shoes because you ran that race barefoot. <laughs> yeah, I ran that race with yeah. barefoot 10 k's in the morning. Yeah. And then afternoon, I ran one in Pylons, five kilometers, I get a pair of shoes. You got a pair of shoes. Yes. <laughs> that's absolutely And then that's from an there, even the people who don't know me, who I am. But you're also living with HIV. Yes. And you've managed to, through your living with HIV, Did keep up your running career and nothing me. has... How nothing. do you make sure that you stay fit, that you stay healthy, that you keep a positive mind? You see, always just positive mind, like you said, and, like, and also just uh, uh, accept uh, everything come the first of all. And then I told myself, okay, it's not the end of life, you know? And nothing's gonna stop me to do what I want to do. Yeah. Same like I was the first black woman to do the house mountain. And then even the people were so worried, how is gonna cope there? How is Only one who knows God. Yeah, yeah. That one take me through to everything. Would you say running also helps you keep a strong keep, mind? Yeah, wakes, make your, your mind strong, you know? Yeah. And also focusing, you know? Like, okay, like special me, what I said, I said, okay, Nothing's going to stop me to do what I want to do. Yeah. And also, I'm not going to die with this uh, disease. I'm going to die like everybody's going to die. Nobody's going to stay here forever. Yeah. Doesn't matter how you die. Only God knows when, where, how. Yeah. Nobody knows. Well, so. Evelina, thank you so much for joining us today. Your story is absolutely inspiring. You make thank me you. want to go run a 20K after this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and also see like now, next week I'm running, uh, uh, this weekend, Sunday, I'm going to run Peninsula. We should also have got a permanent number for that. And then I also, I'm going to do my 16 two oceans. And then I'm going to do my, I think, six or five comrades, which is like so Godspeed to you. Definitely. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Incredible, Evelina, making the rest of us look bad. But we truly celebrate you and encourage you to keep spreading the love in your community. Now we continue our chats with our guests after the break. <laughs>
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now we're on the couch continuing the conversation about health, awareness, HIV, AIDS, and pregnancy, and how we can all raise awareness, get tested, and find out what people are lacking. Welcome back, ladies. Doc, thank you for coming back and joining us. Coming into 2019, what would you like to see happen? Okay, so I'd like to see um, you know every pregnant woman getting tested for HIV because we have the Prevention of Mother to Child Transmission Program, which is a program that ensures that if you're positive and pregnant, you start treatment on time to make sure that your baby is born mm -hmm. HIV negative. Mm -hmm. So if you're pregnant, you have to have an HIV test done. Right away. Right as away. Soon as, you find yeah, out that you're as, yeah. as soon as you find out that you're positive, we start you in treatment. It doesn't, doesn't matter how many pregnancies you've had, you have to test with each pregnancy. Every time. Wow. Yeah. And does um, Mom Connect facilitate that kind of information yeah, on so the initiative? They will get all the information about where to go, what mm. to do, and that type of thing, so, they, so they're more reinforced with info. Yeah. 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 Do you find women experience a, a, a devastation on an even deeper level when they find out that they're HIV positive at being pregnant? Yes. So it, it's hard because you're worried about your baby, mm -hmm. you're worried about your partner, and you're worried about the future. So there's a lot to deal with. And, um, and my counseling is always around, let's get you in treatment, and let's sort out the baby. Once we've sorted that out, we can deal with all your other issues. So I, I actually encourage moms to become very selfish during mm -hmm. that time. Just focus on you and making sure your baby comes out negative. Yeah. And then we'll deal with other stuff later yeah. on. Later. Yeah. Is it possible, I've always wondered, I know that you, it's, you, you can bypass your child getting infected, mm. but is it possible for different siblings from a mother and father, both with HIV, to have different statuses? Yes, it is. So, I mean, in our country, we have situations where, remember there was a time when we didn't have access to ARVs for pregnant women. Yes. Yes. So you'll have a family um, with four kids, and maybe two of them are mm. living with HIV because they were born in the era before ARVs, mm. and the other two kids are born after the era of ARVs. Mm. So yes, it is possible. So I, the fam I'm speaking about a family that I've seen where there's two positive siblings and there's two negative siblings. Yeah. But that's because of our past. But at least now, everyone has access to treatment. Yeah. And mm. Dr. Cindy, you use social media um, and the digital space yeah. to um, to do your work. Mm. And have you found that your 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 following in terms of people coming to you for con for consultation or even just support has grown? Yes, it's grown a lot. I think in the last year, um, almost all my consultations were from Twitter. Um, that's I, amazing. Yeah, I think in the last year, it's really grown, and. Um, it's weird because you know everyone knows what I'm up to. So that, you know the, the opening line is like, "Oh yeah, I saw you at the movies, or I saw you at the <laughs> mall," and then we start speaking about HIV. So it's a bit, it's a bit. I'm a bit shy about all the stuff that I put out onto Twitter. Everyone knows my life, but it's great because we something to talk about, and then we yeah. can speak about it. Yeah, how well, that makes you approachable as yeah, well. Yeah. Absolutely, and I would love to see the de uh, development of this app and reaching into social media and kind of using all the digital tools possible. Yeah, I would also like to see it go that way. Mm. But we must remember not everyone has an app kind of phone, mm. um, you know, especially with not the rural areas again. Not everyone has a phone. Yeah, so yeah. We, need, we need to look at what type of phones people have. And so social media, media works for some and it doesn't work for others. Again, when I said about the grandmothers looking after kids, um, they are not social kind of people. In, mm. I mean, in the social trendy world. Mm. world. Um, so we need to think about that as well. So whoever's in the family mm. and is in social media needs to use that platform and then bring it home, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. How can diet and food help uh, people that are affected by HIV AIDS? Are, is, does your diet play a big role? It's a massive role. Mm. So for example, if, if you don't have folic acid or enough folic acid, your child can be born with sp uh, spina vida. That's when your spine is not properly closed um, mm -hmm. while in the womb. So, I mean, those are small things. Um, folic acid is so inexpensive, um, yet not many people are, are, are getting those kind mm. of supplements. So, um, we need to think about the diet. What are we eating? So, for example, I like to tell people, you can make up a, a pregnancy meal, I call it. Yeah. Um, it's spinach or marojo. Most people mm, eat yes. that, you know. That, that is your vitamin A, and that's your vitamin um uh, um, C when you bring in your onions and your peppers mm. and then you put in a little bit, a bit of milk and that's your dairy because you need some calcium and then you eat that and you stand in the sun for a little bit because that's your vitamin that's D. D. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean it's such a simple thing and we all have those foods in the house. You add some tomato as well and that's your lunch. That's ah. beautiful. Such a beautiful analogy. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us ladies and inspiring us.
Thank absolutely. You and I love all the tips and tricks and bringing such an incredible topic to the forefront. I absolutely enjoyed it. And I enjoyed the chat with you this Monday. Thank you so much, so much, so much, everyone, for tuning in. But join us again tomorrow as we chat to the sexiest man in Umzanti, one of Top Billings presenters, Ufezi Lemkize. See you tomorrow, same time. Good bless. Bye-bye. Afternoon Express, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.